Hello and welcome to this step-by-step -step tutorial on how to fit a Subi Lift Oz Monster Lift Kit to your Subaru. This is a step-by-step -step guide, so if you want to check out a more entertaining video, check out the link provided. As you may be using this video as a guide for your lift kit installation, I will leave time markers in the description below for each step, so you can jump straight to the step that you're stuck on. This installation is also taking place on a 2003 SG Subaru Forester, so some steps may be different for your Subaru model. Please also note this guide is based on the Subi Lift Oz fitting instructions and they should be your primal source of information. In terms of tools, what you will need is a complete socket set, a breaker bar, a torque wrench, assorted screwdrivers, pliers, a bucket, at least two axle stands and a trolley jack. You should expect the installation to take at least two days if working by yourself. To start the installation, the first thing I'm going to do is crack the wheel nuts and then jack up the car, resting the body securely on the axle stands. If you don't have four axle stands, you can always start at the front and then jack up the rear of the car later. Next, I removed all wheels and it's time to give the underbody a good clean. I find jacking up the car with all wheels removed gives the best access to the underbody of the car as you want to remove as much dirt as possible. Now that the underbody is clean, we can move to the engine bay and start by disconnecting the battery. Next, drain the coolant and collect it in a container. Once the coolant is drained, remove the top radiator hose and loosen the bottom radiator hose clamps. Next, remove the short fuel line between the fuel filter and engine. You are dealing with flammable liquids here, so be very cautious and use a rag to stop the fuel spilling into the engine bay. Now you can remove the air intake system. I'm running a snorkel, so I have to disconnect the snorkel first before removing the air box. Stuff a clean rag into the throttle body to prevent dirt entering the engine. Now we can move on to the pitch stop. On the SG Forester, there is an earth wire from the gearbox that needs to be removed. Remove the pitch stop bolts and then the pitch stop itself. Next, locate the lower steering shaft pinch bolt and loosen. Make sure your steering wheel is straight to keep your steering in good alignment. Finally, remove the windscreen washer bottle. There are two bolts on the top to remove and then you can pull the washer bottle upwards. Once you've pulled the bottle up a little bit, you'll have better access to the pump motors and the washer lines so you can disconnect them and then put the washer bottle aside. Next, you want to remove the sway bar end links. In my case, I'm not running sway bars, but this is a step for those who have them. Now we move on to the front struts. Remove the brake line and ABS line from the strut. From here, you want to use some sort of a strap or rope to secure the hub and stop the CV from popping out of place. Remove lower strut bolts. And the top hat bolts to remove the strut. Repeat on the other side. Now it's time to start working on the subframe. As per the instructions, remove bolts 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 and 8. Leave bolts 5 and 6 which attach the engine cross member. Loosen the lower control arm bush nuts and remove the LCA bolts. From here you want to get to the trolley jack and support the engine. Once the engine is supported, you can remove the engine cross member bolts. There are two nuts that can be loosened from the wheel well and the bolts themselves are secured on the bracket. These brackets are found next to the ABS box on the driver's side and underneath the washer bottle on the passenger side. These are also held in by screws, which you will have to remove. I find the passenger side quite tricky to remove as there is a solid line above it. The line, however, is quite soft and easy to bend out of the way. You will want to remove the three bolts from the cruise control box on the strut tower, as this will also be in your way. Now remove the cross member bolts. With all the bolts removed, 
check if fender liner is not connected to the subframe. If so, remove the connecting clips. Now you can slowly lower the subframe, checking that nothing is catching as you lower. Now that the subframe is lowered, insert the engine cross member spacers and fit the supplied bolts. Fit the LCA spacers and supplied hardware. Now you can reposition the jack to support the gearbox. Remove the front and rear transmission cross member bolts and then lower the transmission. Now fit all subframe spacers and hardware, but don't tighten until all bolts are in. Remember to use median strength thread lock on all hardware. I found using a jack as support on the rear of the subframe was very helpful to keep the subframe aligned. Once all spacers and hardware are fitted, torque bolts to the specifications as per instructions. Now we can move on to the strut top spacers. Take note that the strut top spacers have an R and L with arrows on them. R represents the driver's side and L represents the passenger side. When fitting the arrow, should point inwards towards the transmission. While I was at it, I replaced the strut top hat as the old ones are worn. This is not a step in the installation, but while the strut was out, I figured I may as well replace them. Tighten all strut top spacer nuts and remember to use thread lock. I found using a long screwdriver jammed between the strut top studs was useful to stop the strut moving while tightening. Refit struts and fit strut bolts loosely. Apply anti-seize to the lower strut bolts and tighten. When fitting the camber bolt, rotate to maximum camber. Remember, you will get a wheel alignment to fix the camber later. Tighten the strut top nuts and torque the lower strut bolts as per instructions. Refit your ABS and brake lines and reconnect your sway bar end links. Next, you want to support the tail shaft and remove the tail shaft center bearing bolts. Refit with the provided spaces. Now cut the top radiator hose in half. I found it easiest to remove the hose completely before cutting. Now that you have the two pieces, fit the radiator hose extension. I had to add some plumbing tape to the bolt fitted on the extension to stop it leaking. Now refit to vehicle, tighten all clamps and refill your coolant. Next, fit the new adjustable engine pitch stop. I simply adjusted mine to the length where it fit perfectly and then tighten the bolts. Remember to re-secure transmission earth wire while you're there. Refit your windscreen washer bottle. Next, attach the steering linkage extension. I removed mine from the car for easier access. Make sure your steering wheel and front wheels are in the straight position when fitting, otherwise your steering will be off. Fit the extended fuel line supplied in the kit. Refit air intake system and reconnect snorkel if you have one. Remember to pull the rag out of the throttle body before fitting the intake. Now start the engine. Check for leaks and make sure everything is tight and working properly. Now it's time to start working on the rear. First, remove the handbrake cable brackets on the trailing arms. Next, remove your centre and rear exhaust sections. If you have sway bars, remove them next. Remove your brake line from the strut. Now, move to the interior of the car and remove the strut top cover trims. Then, remove the strut top bolts. Remove lower strut bolts and remove the strut. Remove your trailing arm bolts. Now, you want to support the rear diff with a jack, followed by unbolting the rear subframe bolts as shown here. These are accessed from your wheel well. With the rear subframe bolts removed, you can now carefully lower the subframe. Loosely fit the rear subframe spacers and hardware. Reposition the jack to support the rear diff outrigger. Once supported, remove the diff outrigger bolts. Fit the trailing arm spacers and loosely fit hardware. Fit the diff outrigger spacers and hardware as shown. I had to remove the massive washer from the top of the outrigger bush to the bottom. With all subframe spacers fitted, torque bolts as per instructions. Fit the rear strut top spacers. Again, there is an L and an R representing left and right, so make sure you fit the correct spacer to the correct strut. Apply anti-seize to lower strut bolts and fit. Replace the upper bolt with the supplied camber bolts. Make sure the tab on the washer faces inwards when fitting. 
This allows for maximum camber, fit strut top bolts, and brake lines. Reconnect your sway bars. Fit the handbrake bracket extensions as shown. Lastly, fit the exhaust. You can use coat hanger wire to secure the two rear hangers to the body as the exhaust will no longer line up. I welded some new hangers on, so the wire is just a temporary measure until you get to an exhaust shop. At the very least, ask them to fix your exhaust hangers, but you're better off asking them to tuck your exhaust up into the body for better clearance. Refit your wheels and lower your car. The last thing you want to do is tighten your front LCA bush nut as the bush needs to adjust to the new height and angle. And there you go, you just fitted a monster lift kit to your Subaru. Remember you still need to get a wheel alignment and get your exhaust modified. So that's it for the Subi Lift Oz monster lift kit install video. If you found this video helpful in any way, why not head over to my fanpage account and leave a tip. All tips help me create more content to benefit the off-road Subaru community. Feel free to check out my Instagram and my blog at Ignition Off-Road. That's it for this video and I'll see you all next time.